Welcome to my mathematics demo. This time I will be using Word and its mathematics add-in to solve and plot equations. Click on the link below in the info section of YouTube to download and install your mathematics add-in for Microsoft Word and 2007 and 2010. So let's start with a simple task of finding factors of numbers, numerical values. Press Alt plus to enter a numerical value of 125. Right click on this value, compute algebra factor. We have to find the factor of 125, we have 5 cubed. 5 is a factor of 125. Cubed means it's 5 times 5 times 5. This equals 125. Let's enter another value of 123. Compute algebra factor. We have a new notation here, which is 3.41. 3 is a factor of 123. 41 is a factor of 123. The dot represents the product of, in other words, multiplied by. 3.41. 3 multiplied by 41, we have 123. So, let's enter another value. This time, we'll use a decimal value of 7.41. And compute algebra factor. What we have is 3, for the numerator we have 3.13.19, and for the denominator we have 2 squared dot 5 squared. The numerator ev evaluates to 3 times 13 times 19 evaluates to 741. The denominator evaluates to 2, two squared, which is 4 times 5 squared which is 25 which e equals 100. 741 over 100 is 7.41 and this this will be very useful when we're trying to factorize uh, quadratic equations and cubic equations. So let's start with nonlinear Cartesian functions. These are quadratics and cubics or x to the power n functions. Odd and even powered functions, also known as odd and even functions. Even, fun even powered functions are symmetrical and the odd powered functions are non-symmetrical. So if we enter an equation in, alt plus x squared minus 4 equals y. Let's re-enter this equation in again. And here, what we do is remove our right-hand side of the equation and right-click, Compute, Algebra, Factor. This will factorize our equation for us to x minus 2, x plus 2. We can also right-click on this factorized form and Compute, Algebra, Expand. This will expand out the brackets and take us back to our original state of x squared minus 4. It's very useful for expanding brackets and convert uh, factorizing into bracket form. Okay, so let's move on and plot the original equation. What we do is right click graph plot in 2D. Here we have our equation on top corner there. Let's set the axes and let's insert the graph into the document. What we what we can see is a point that where it crosses this graph crosses the x-axis. In this case it's negative 2 and positive 2. But you, you will be wondering how we work that out through this equation that we have here. What we do is simply set the x squared minus 4 equal to 0. When y equals 0 we want to know what x will equal. Right click, compute, solve for x. Here we have a solution of x equals negative 2 or x equals 2. This is where it crosses the x-axis when y equals 0, which we can clearly see from our graph that we've, graphical solution that we've already drawn above. Okay, so let's move on and find the extremums. The extremum is basically a maximum or minimum point on the graph. 
in this quadratic equation it's the minimum point as we can see and th it's this value here how do we work this value out? the extremum is also known as the point of inflection the point of inflection where the gradient of the tangent to the curve equals zero so from that definition the gradient of the tangent to the curve equals zero is basically so what we need to do is find the differential equation of the original function which is x squared minus 4 right click compute find the first order differential equation on x differentiate on x we have a differential equation of 2x now we can set this differential equation equal to 0 and then solve for x solve for x this gives us a value of x equals 0 now using this x equals 0 value we substitute that back into our original equation control V and our original equation for x now if we set the x value to 0 so we have 0 squared minus 4 equals y right click on this equation compute solve for y we have y equals negative 4 when x equals 0 y equals negative 4 this is basically our extremum value which is the minimum point on the graph as we've seen here we can see that the value is there but to be more precise about this we can actually trace the value and let's move the trace point to the minimum point on the graph we, we might not get a precise value but here we can see when x equals 0 approximately 0 y equals negative 4 let's update the graph so we get that value within our graph above that's our point of inflection the minimum point on our graph and we work that out through the first order differential equation equal, set it to equal to zero and we have an x value we use that x value so we substitute that back into our original equation to find the y value at, at the point where x equals zero y equals negative four let's try a, another example and this time we'll try a cubic example alt plus to enter x cubed plus 5x squared minus 2x minus 24 equals y we've logged our equation, original equation in let's input that equation in again and remove the right hand side to factorize this equation what we do right click compute algebra factor this factorizes the equation for us to x minus 2 multiplied by x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 4 once it's factorized we can set this equation equal to 0 to find where this equation crosses the x-axis and solve for x let's compute solve for x we can see that the equation above crosses the x-axis at x equals 2 or x equals negative 3 or x equals negative 4 it crosses the x-axis three times if we plot our original equation graph plot in 2D we are just the axes so we have a more clearer picture and let's insert that value in we can clearly see it crosses the x-axis at negative 4 negative 3 and positive 2 now to find the extremums again on this cubic equation we find the first order differential equation to do this we enter our value in and we d differentiate this equation on x so we move the right hand side right click compute differentiate on x we have our first order differential equation as 3x squared plus 10x minus 2 we can set this value equal to 0 and find a value where the differential equation satisfies the 
gradient of the tangent equal to zero. In this case, it's x equals this fractional, fractional value here, and x equals this fractional value here. What I've done here so far is converted these x values into a decimal value of x equals negative 3.52 and x equals 0 0.19. Now we use these values and substitute it back into our original equation. I've substituted these values in and now we can solve the equation. What I've done here is substituted the values in of negative 3.52 into the original equation and solve for y. y equals 1.38 when x equals negative 3.52 and 0 0.193 uh, 19 when x equals 0 0.19 we want to solve for y. We have y equals negative this fraction. We can simplify this fraction into a decimal form compute calculate and that is our y value y equals that. So let's put that back in there and we have in a decimal form. Now we can check this, these points by tracing them. If I can just put my tracer on this won't get a precise figure here but when what we get, what we have is 3.5 near 3.5 we've got a value of 1.37 maximum value point of inflection and at 0 0.19 19, we have a negative value of negative 24.19. We update our graph, we can see one of these values there. When it's 0 0.19, we have a negative 24.19. And that's our extremum values, maximum and, mini and minimum values for this equation. Let's plot a nonlinear inequality. We have x squared minus 5x plus 6 is greater than or equal to y. Let's use this equation. We input the values in. And this time we want to set this equation equal to 0. When y equals 0, we want to be able to solve this equation. Solve for x. We have x less than or equal to 2 or x greater than or equal to 3. What it's basically done is factorize the left hand side and set that equal to greater than or equal to zero and then find the value for x. Now if we plot this inequality, we can graph plot inequality and see this inequality here plotted for us clearly. And what we're interested in is the shaded part. The equation x squared minus 5x plus 6 greater than or equal to y represented by the shaded part of, of the graph and the solid line x squared line. The x greater less than or equal to 2 or x greater than or equal to 3 is these points where it crosses the x axis and anything be on this side of the two is what we're interested in and anything on that side of the three is what we're interested in. Anything in the middle, which is the non-shaded part, we're not interested in as it does not satisfy this equation above. Okay, hope you found the demo useful. Don't forget to click the link below in the info section to download Microsoft Mathematics ID.